Hi, my name is Sion Ramon. I am the presenter for this talk, and I would like to thank conference organizers for giving me a chance to make this presentation. In the following slides, I will summarize the visual cognition timeframes as seen from neuroscience and from Buddhist perspective and compare results derived from both sides. Now let's go to the next slide. So a long time ago, like thousands of years ago, uh, there were no clocks. So Buddhist meditators, they sort of devised some time frame to measure how the uh, mental thoughts arise and subside and how fast they arise and subside. So for that, they defined something called instant and which was a very short duration of day and night. Now we know that in day and night, there are 24 hours. So based on that, an instant comes out to be about 13.33 uh, milliseconds. And this was the uh, definition which was used by many Buddhist philosophers. Now this instant also often called uh, Shana, uh, which in Sanskrit language is written as Shana. And uh, this is what mainly we will find in the literature. Now let's go to the next slide. So from the definition of instant, many other quantities were derived. Finger snap was one of the standard measure which was used by Buddhist philosophers in place of a clock. Finger snap comes out to be about 60 to 65 instant, which is about 0 0.8 to 0 0.867 seconds. Now, a complete a mental action is similar to a finger snap, which is also about the same time frame. Now, a mental thought is defined as nine instants, which is equal to 120 milliseconds. That uh, in EEG research might be an interesting number because the first impression of the object in the visual cortex, back of the head, uh, shows up about between 80 to 130 milliseconds. So 120 milliseconds falls within that frame. And that represents first impression of the object on the brain. One human reflection is 90 instant, which is equal to about 1.2 second, which would represent about a complete mental action or completing a, a task, which will be like a looking at an object and recognizing and assimilating the new knowledge in, the, uh, in our memory. Next thing was defined was mental episode, which is a very short duration of time. And that was defined or used to show how fast the thoughts were arising and subsiding in the mind. And that number comes out to be about 14.8 microsecond. That will still be very difficult to measure with the current EEG techniques, but it is worth exploring on it. In the next slide, I will talk about finger snap measurement. So we asked a subject to do finger snap while we are recording the timing of the duration of the finger snaps. And it is shown in this picture here. As you can see, person is doing finger snaps and we are recording the time. So averaged over 100 trials, we found it comes out to be about 0 0.83 seconds, which is very similar to what Buddhist philosophers have been talking about. The inside moments are also known as an ah moment or eureka moment. And they refer to suddenly finding a solution to a problem, 
uh, as an example of Archimedes. And similarly, in EEG data sets, uh, when a person looks at an object and he recognizes an object, would also be called as an inside moment or an eureka moment. This we studied using the EEG data sets described in the next slide. So where does the face slip come from and what does it mean? Now, when I look at the cortical activity, majority of the neurons are firing in a random fashion that give rise to EEG. However, in addition to that, in the small areas of the cortex, like in a 0.1 millimeter or 0.5 millimeter, it's very small volume, there will be a bunch of neurons which are sort of coordinating their activity and they are always in a state of criticality. What it means is that they are uh, at the threshold where any slight change could uh, trigger them to fire together, which is known as a phase transition. And this input could be external, like a visual or audio, or it could be even internal, like a mental thought. And so this produces uh, a burst of oscillations whenever this group of neurons fire, and this could happen all over the brain. And so these uh, burst of oscillations uh, produce small glitches in the EEG data, but those glitches carry a good set of information like a, how the cortex is going through cortical phase transitions. And that can be studied by taking the Hilbert transform of the EEG data and which gives rise to face slips. So here in this slide, I'm showing the uh, spatial plots of EEG and the face slip rate, which tells us how fast the phase transitions are happening with time. So here is uh, EEG uh, with a 0.1 second separation. And similarly, here is the phase slip, uh, which tells us the cortical phase transition happening in theta, alpha, beta, and low gamma band. Now, uh, interesting thing to note in this picture will be between 0 to 0 0.1 second, you can see visual cortex and left and right uh, temporal area is very active. This represents the first impression of the looking at a picture on the back of our head. Now at the same time, while this is going on, if you look into the phase transition or the cortical phase thing, it tells us a lot of activity going on in the parietal area. So uh, that's why it becomes important to look at the EEG and the cortical phase transition at the same time, because on the EEG, it tells us what the visual cortex is doing. But the phase transition is telling us that memory area is already beginning to look at an object and analyze it while visual cortex is just looking at the picture and getting a, a first impression of the object. So looking at EEG and the phase transition, we get a slightly complete picture where uh, visual cortex in EEG, alpha band phase transition, tell us uh, language and memory area is already beginning to think about what the object might be. And in the beta band, it is beginning to coordinate with the frontal area and the visual and parietal area to 
see what its uh, language, memory, and emotional activity might be. So what I'm trying to bring out here is these things happen simultaneously, and you can study with uh, face transition in a more precise way. And this is what we wanted to bring out. The interesting portion of this slide is to see that what we talk about uh, visual cortex active between 80 to 130 millisecond, uh, which might be similar to a thought moment, what people talk in Buddhist literature, that it is the first impression of the object in the language area. Now let's look at different stages of object naming. In this picture, what we are showing here is a EEG trace from the visual cortex area, which is on the top line here, and different peaks are identified. Like P100 would mean that at 100 milliseconds, one person begins to visualize an object. Then in the following plots, we are giving you the face slip rate, which tells us how fast the cortical face transitions are happening in theta, alpha, and beta band. And here we have marked these different stages of object recognition. First one will be uh, the first impression of the ob object in the visual cortex area. Second stage represents uh, like a, a person beginning to explore in language and memory area what the object might be. Third stage represents uh, what is known as a eureka moment or a moment that's where person recognizes an object and says ah that's what it is okay so that's the third stage fourth stage is to incorporate that knowledge in the uh, memory area shorter memory area and then the fifth stage of the object recognition is for brain to begin to return to the background activity. And then after that, it takes some time for brain to actually come back to the normal brain activity. For this particular case, it is about one to 1.1 second, you can see very easily. These peaks in theta band of cortical phase activity as well as in alpha band tells us where the stages are beginning and ending, which are easier to identify in the uh, phase slip rate or cortical phase transition. So that's what we are showing in this uh, slide here. And in the next slide, I will summarize the timings of all these different stages. The overall summary of different stages is given here. Uh, the first impression is within the uh, first 120 millisecond and then second stage to explore in language and memory area, which is up to 370 millisecond. And then stage three is the Eureka moment to recognize an object, which is up to about 520 millisecond. And after that, verifying that it is the correct information and assimilating the new knowledge in the memory is about 650 millisecond. So overall, it takes about uh, 
0.85 seconds to recognize an object and begin to return to the uh, resting state. And then from there, it, it goes up to 1.2 second to actually return to the resting state. Now, these numbers match very well with what is written in Buddhist literature, such as one mental action will be is to time frame to recognize an object. And then completing a total uh, action, which is the one human reflection, matches up very well for a total time of object naming from zero to 1.2 second, where one where the brain is returned to the background state. So this is the summary. Time period of instants is possibly could be seen in the detailed spatial plots of the EEG data. Here we are showing the plots starting from 20 milliseconds all the way up to 80, 83 milliseconds. And in a shorter time frame, you can see like here, the visual cortex is beginning to become active and it keeps going stronger and stronger. When it begins to shift from visual to uh, deeper parietal area. So here, this could represent one of the instants or uh, shana what we talk about in Buddhist literature. Similarly, if we move forward, we will see the activity is becoming more focused in this uh, central parietal areas, and it gets stronger here and, the, and remains, and then it begins to diffuse again, and so. This represents another, um, uh, uh, I mean, measure of instant in the uh, uh, parietal area of the brain. Similarly, if we move forward, you can see now activity is in this, like a left front temporal area and the strong parietal area, and it is shifting slowly towards the temporal areas, as you can see, and getting stronger. So overall, on this over here, you will see another instant, which could come out, which comes out to be about 16 milliseconds. So this way, what I'm trying to show here is, there are different periods of instant in the visual, parietal, and temporal areas. And that's what in Buddhist literature they might have been talking about as instant or shana, which was measured to be 13.33 millisecond. And here in our measurement, we see more like between 16 to 14 millisecond, slightly larger, but not very big difference. Now coming to a very short time frame, which Buddhist people call mental episodes of about 14.8 microseconds. Those are very difficult to see in EEG, but there might be pos there might be a possibility to see them in some well-designed experiments using uh, cell assemblies or even in single cell recording or in micro EEG data. Uh, and that mi they might relate to arch our theories, what a lot of people have talked about. And that signature falls somewhere between network and a single microtubule. So somewhere right here. So it's a possibility. We might see it in the future. So now to summarize uh, what we have seen in neuroscience measurements of object naming, different stages of object naming, they seem to match up very well with what is written in Buddhist literature or what Buddhist monks saw thousands of years ago. Similarly, the finger snap 
uh, measurement also matches very well what's written in Buddhist literature as compared to what we have seen in measurement. So overall summary is that there is a good correlation between uh, neuroscience measurements and what is written in Buddhist literature that these time frames are very similar. And with this, my hope is that it could uh, build another bridge to connect neuroscience with the Buddhist philosophy. And this might help us to develop better and more inclusive theories of mental consciousness based on neuroscience principles and based on what is already seen in Buddhist uh, philosophical literature. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to present this talk. I hope it helps and benefits everybody. Thank you very much.